here we go. Hollywood again, grabbing on to animes, making them into live actions. And, you know, so far, with the exception of Alita Battle Angel, we've seen not any good signs out of it. But before we start, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell and switch it all. And you'll receive all of our notifications here on CutieCast TV and Mad Man with the Show. So, we've heard the situations with several series. We know we have um, a Gundam. Uh, we have Cowboy Bebop, which probably by now has aired uh, its first ep- first couple of episodes. Uh, and a couple of others that are being worked on currently right now. And now, Hollywood has its sights on one of the classic greats out there. Uh, from back, not too far back, but, uh, a good back ways on there. And, um, on top of that, you know, I'm surprised Netflix hasn't grabbed this because they, they've had the, uh, 3d animation version of this out, which was, it was decent. It was good, but it seems like now we're getting a Gantz movie, which definitely I know is going to be some issues on there. Uh, We're going to read a little bit into this. An exclusive report from Deadline, we know now who will be helming the previous announced live-action Gantz movie. Uh, The honor of taking Hiro Oko's popular manga series to the big screen in English will be no other than Julius Avery, who previously helmed the 2018 horror Overlord. Not the anime Overlord. This is one of these zombie flicks, which Overlord was okay. It was an okay horror flick. My wife did like Overlord. Uh, she said it wasn't the greatest uh, as far as the f- horror flick, but it was good. It was a good watch on there. Avery will direct the film based on the script by Arrow producer Mark Guggenheim. That's where I have the problem. Uh, Temple Hill, uh, which is tw- Twilight, The Fault in Our Stars, is producing with Sony Pictures to distribute. Since the live-action Gantz, it locked its director. There's currently no f- further information about the release plans. Oku recently spoke with Crunchyroll in an interview, saying that he liked the rights back if Sony doesn't plan moving forward with the production despite the delays due to COVID-19. It appears that's no longer the case. So for now, we'll have to wait and see what happens next for Gantz's turn in Hollywood. In addition to the TV anime, Gantz was previously adapted in a pair of live-action films in 2011 and CG animation in 2016, which that was the Netflix one. Dark Horse published the manga in English and some of the story like this. And this is the back, the backstory. If you're not familiar with the backstory of Gantz, uh, Tokyo teens Kei and Masuri are killed by a subway train, but awaken in a room with an black orb that gives them weapon suits and orders them to fight bizarre alien monstrosities in a daily game. Will they win their freedom or die for the final time? Now, if you're familiar with Gantz, you know the issues that happen in here, that there is scenes of sex, nudity, uh, it's very violent. I'm going to tell you straight out, and I'm going to give you this pat right now, and this is Sony. This is Sony that's putting this out. If this movie does not get at least a rated R, at least a rated R, it's it, it, it's going to fail immediately. It's going to fail immediately. For the reason is, is that the subject matter in this movie is not something for, for teens, young teens, under, under 17. That's a... De- that's a definite situation. If you're under 17, the Gantz is not for you. Even though I know there are those who have read this in that age group and who have seen the original anime, which the anime is fantastic. The original anime, fantastic storyline on there. Uh, that's needing a, I believe it needs a restoration, if I'm not mistaken, on there, if they haven't done it yet. But if this thing comes out as a PG-13, oh, just stay the hell away from it. Because Sony has been known for censorship, changing storylines, a lot that's going on. You know, they own, they already own Crunchyroll and Funimations. And you already see what they already do with products at Funimations and what they've done so far in the last 
couple of years. And you, you can see now, even though they were not responsible, how they promoted out Heart High Guardian Spice. I would have not put that out if I was a Sony executive. I would have trashed the situation or sold it to maybe Cartoon Network because basically, I mean, it, it, it's being reviewed bombed to oblivion. You, th you think Eternals are, are, was getting slammed by the media. Freaking uh, High Guardian Spice is, is just getting nuked several times from orbit. But like I said, if this doesn't get an R rating, and if, if, if basically they cut a lot of stuff out, which I know Hollywood will do this. Hollywood would do this. The only really true and live action anime adaptation, which did a, a fantastic job, is Alita Battle Angel. Why have we not seen a sequel? Why? It works. It worked. Really, come on. Meanwhile, they put out this garbage. You've seen, you've seen the situations with what they're doing with Cowboy Bebop. You've seen what they've done with many other the live action changes. I mean, Dragon Ball, Last Airbender. Um, you know, I could go on and on and on and on and on. And, you know, with the, the couple of things that are coming out, I'm really worried. I'm really, really worried on the next stuff that are coming out. That they're just really destroying the anime genre, live action genre. I mean, I've seen some stuff out of Japan as far as the live action that does a lot better. Kagaguri is very good. I like Kagaguri on there. You know, the live action on it. Uh, Way of the House Husband is getting a live action ad adaptation movie, but in Japan. That should do very well. Uh, Tokyo Revengers was a box office hit in Japan. It did very well for itself. Why did it do well? Because they didn't pander to the situation. Sometimes the live actions don't do well. They don't get, you know, they don't translate well to the big screen. It's like Doom. You know, Doom does not translate very well from novel to big screen. This is why I've said this new Doom is not Frank Herbert's Doom. It's never going to be. It looks beautiful. It looks great. Yeah. Uh, Look at, look at some of what the people say on there. There are missing characters, elements, uh, race swaps. Uh, the, the music itself is not the greatest music in the world, even though it, it's a nice uh, harmonic symphony in the background, but it doesn't perk it up. It doesn't bring it forward. You know, I said good soundtrack is important for a movie. You know, we've discussed this on Saturday Pre-Flight many, many times. So let's see what happens. Let's hope this works out like Alita or we're just going to get another mess. So tell me in the comments below what you think. And uh, be civil about it. I know those of you are going to be mad about it. So don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share. We're on various social media platforms, BitChute, Odyssey, and YouTube, obviously. Uh, and we're also regular social media account centers at Facebook, Twitter, Parler, uh, Getter, which is brand new to us on there. You can find us on there as well. Gab and also Minds. You can find us there as well. And thank you for those of you who have subscribed to on there, especially my Parler subscribers out there. It's uh, the Parler account for Cutacast has been increasing. I think we were way over... I think we're already over 2,000 by now. I think we are, or we're close to 2,000 subscribers there. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. And bye-bye uh, now.